I'm a little late to the party, but it's fine. You know, the Boston Celtics have humiliated my Dallas Mavericks in five games to win their record-setting 18th NBA championship. And I got to tell you, boy, oh, boy, all five games were really, really rough to watch. Um, on the first couple of games, you know, were really competitive. We, uh, at least one game was really competitive, the others, not so much. Um, just a very unsatisfying finals, very unsatisfying conclusion as a Dallas Mavericks fan for, you know, for guys like Jalen Brown, who won the finals MVP, for Jason Tatum, who's been long, you know, regarded as, you know, oh, he's he's not him, he he's not that guy, yada, yada, yada. Um, he doesn't have to be. When, when you have Jalen Brown on this court, you know, dominating the way he does, you know it, it's going to be crazy. When you have guys like Drew Holiday going up and getting 27 some nights, you know, it, it, it it's, again, this is what I just said the entire year, you know, that Boston has probably one of the most complete teams. There's a reason they won 64 games in the regular season, you know, complete team, Al Horford had never won an NBA championship before. Shooting lights out from three, making plays when it counted. Christoph Porzingis, even though he was hurt for a good chunk of his playoffs, game one, went off. Went off on a tear. Derek White, the that guy, you know, even though he's bald, you know, now, he is – Plays absolutely amazing defense. And then, of course, you know, guys like Peyton Pritchard, who could shoot up threes from half court. He did it twice. You know, Sam Hauser, you know, other guys on this Boston team just did what they needed to do, man. And for and for guys, you know, like Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving and Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington, you know, just it just isn't enough. It, it just this lineup, you know, was not built for the NBA Finals for Dallas. This really was Denver's slot, but again, you know, and Denver would have took it Boston to distance. I guarantee you that. But again, Minnesota decided to crash party, you know. But but hey, I'm glad the Mavericks even made it here because again, I didn't think the Mavs were going to beat Boston anyway. But I mean. You know, because I mean, if anybody else was going to get, to, if anybody else is going to get the Boston, it would be Denver. It would be Denver. Um, maybe Minnesota, but I think that would also not end super, super well because you know, um, you know, Cat and them are pretty big, but you know, you know, Celtics can shoot. So yeah. Boston walks away with their record-setting 18 championship, surpassing the L.A. Lakers, and they go off to the offseason looking mighty fine. I mean, if they can retain this crew, this crew is definitely going to go back-to-back. If they can retain all those guys. Um, because, I mean, there's a, there's a lot, you know, on that squad that can just go, you know. Um. The other thing is the TNT negotiations are still kind of, you know, kind of weird right now. You know, we don't know if TNT is going to get the NBA back for like a fourth package or is it going to be split? And we still haven't even finalized everything yet. You know, Adam Silver wants that streaming deal. He wants Amazon into the fold. He's getting Amazon into the fold. He wants NBC and Peacock into the fold. He, he's getting Peacock into the fold. He's getting ESPN Plus into the fold, not just regular ESPN. He's getting ESPN Plus into the fold for exclusive games. And I just got to say, I hate streaming so much. I really do. But I mean, the 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 the, the good thing about it is, is that we're probably going to get, you know, network games on, you know, Tuesday nights on NBC. I think that'd be nice. Um, but other than that, uh, uh, I guess, I guess, man. So, yeah, Charles Barkley may be retiring, you know, after the 2024-2025 season, you know. I mean, he's been at the TNT desk for quite some time, nearly 25 years. And, yeah, 
think I think that'll be a good time for him to retire. You know, um, inside the NBA is not really the greatest show, but it does provide all the funniest moments. You know, <laughs> it is the funniest pregame show out there, even though it has no announcements whatsoever half the time. You know, <laughs> the analysis that is where you get it's pretty straightforward. That's just me, though. On one other side of things, we have the WNBA. And let me tell you, the discourse about, you know, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese has been absolutely disgusting. I'm telling you right now, people on Twitter, people on all sorts of social media, are just absolutely just annoying as hell. Annoying as hell. Really, really annoying. You know, we should be talking about the basketball that's being played. You know, the basketball being played is actually pretty interesting. You know, right now, right now, you look at things, you know, the sky and the fever are battling it out for that eighth and ninth place spot. Again, we're already about a third of the way into the WNBA season. So because, you know, some teams have played, you know, only about uh, about 12 games. Teams like Caitlin Clark's fever played 15. So it's because it's an Olympic year. So I don't know why people are mad about that. It's an Olympic year. The Olympics are this year. Did y'all not know this or something? Because, like, yeah. But, yeah, the Connecticut Sun, they were out to a unbeaten streak before they lost their first game. The New York Liberty have been really good behind Sabrina Yescu. And Rihanna Stewart, also John Quill Jones, has been balling out. Oh, my God. Balling out 20-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, you know, the last couple games and everything like that. Just been absolutely on a tear. You know, the Mystics finally won a game. They finally won two games, actually. You know, they're 2 and 12 right now. They started out 0 and 10, but they won a couple and they are really getting in there. Um, the Las Vegas Aces have been going undergoing some injuries and, and some bad play really recently, but they're still in position to be in position. Um, Brittany Griner, Diana Taurasi, and the Mercury are in a nice spot as well. Don't forget about the Erica Hamby and the LA Sparks. The wings are led by Arike. Because I always mess up with last names. Um, the wings are not, you know, in really good position because of the injuries uh, to Sabali and Cowan and stuff like that. But, you know, it is what it is there. And I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. You know, the dream are also 6-6. Six six. Don't count out the dream at all either. But definitely watch out for the middle of the links. Ephesia Collier has been on a tear, on an absolute tear past couple weeks. And, I mean, the Lynx, Sun, Liberty, and even the Storm, the NC Mockery Board, yeah, and Jewel Lloyd and company, I mean, just, I mean, this is a really, really good Storm team. So, I mean, we're looking for a good, good time the next couple weeks. we got some big matchups um, coming up over the next couple weeks again. Caitlin Clark, Angel Grease Part 3 will be on Sunday, I believe. It'll be Sunday. Yeah, it'll be uh, Sunday at 3 o'clock on ESPN. And, and, of course, that LA New York matchup will be on Saturday. Of course, there's also a couple games on Sunday the 30th. Um, One of them, of course, involving... Caitlin Clark's Indiana Fever, and then another couple of Indiana games, you know, we're just going along down the motion. We're going down the motion through the ocean. You know, um, before the WNBA All-Star break, which I presume by the time we get to the All-Star break, I presume most teams have like 25 games played. So we'll be in position to be in position, I'll tell you that much. So get comfortable. The WNBA season is continuing to uh, – get really intense and i mean these ladies are balling out you know putting up you know some of these ladies put them 20 and 10 you know or you know 20 points 10 boards or 20 points 10 rebounds some of these ladies are you're just absolutely amazing on defense team you know gals like Aaliyah boston has been improving you know people were criticizing her so bad that she just was like ah oh, no nah, i ain't gonna be on twitter no more so you know, and then she stepped up, stepped up big time. She's been stepped up big time for the fever, you know. Um, Melissa Smith as well, you know, for the fever. And so it's not just Caitlin Clark. So it, it's it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how things shake out over the next couple of weeks. 
you know, again, the WNBA All-Star Game will be on the 20th of July, so that's the next time I will come to you. Um, by that time, that happens, the NBA draft will have happened. And to be completely honest, I do not particularly care about the NBA draft. It's even worse than the NFL draft because of how bad things are, you know, like the college game, you know, has guys playing four to five years again, and it's just not producing draft results that I think are really, you know, worth it. And um, also the, um, the summer league starts up in July, so that's also a thing that's happening. So for the NBA, you know, that's like July 12th to the 22nd. So, yeah. But from me to you, I'll see you when the NHL finals conclude. Hopefully it will be – it might be tonight. And then I'll talk about, you know, stuff tomorrow. And then, you know, again – um, this weekend of football, of course, will be on Sunday night, about eight o'clock, eight o'clock or so, and then uh, we'll talk some Premier Lacrosse League, you know, some major series lacrosse, some, um, you know, some Senior A, Junior A, Summer Box, and uh, that's about it from lacrosse anyway, because uh, PL is on a bye week, so we'll talk about that um, at some point this week. I don't know when. But, yeah, from me to you, that'll do it. I um, hope y'all take care, and I'll see you all later.